I am the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the whistler's strange story, The Secret of Chalk Point. Chalk Point is a tiny strip of land that extends into the Pacific, and at Land's End stands Jaeger House, a large and gloomy old structure built at the turn of the century. Barely visible now in the swirling mist, the heavy fog that clings to the coast of Northern California. And in that fog, strolling casually along the beach, Kay Fallon, young and attractive, a polo coat wrapped tightly around her, shutting out the chill of the evening. And suddenly she stops, peers ahead into the gray shadows. A man. Yes, the figure of a man walking in from the sea, moving through the fog towards you, Kay, staggering now and falling on the beach. What's wrong? Are you hurt? The, the, the ship... ship went down. A shipwreck? Yes. Yes. Oh... Oh, all hands lost. When did it happen? Where? Up, up the coast. Fog. We hit the rocks. Out there. Here, let me help you. So, oh, tired, tired. Been in the water for hours. Seemed like years, years. What ship were you on? Schooner, Star of Shanghai. My ship. She's gone. All hands gone. Easy now. Easy. Easy. My fault. All my fault. Here. Can you walk? I think so. Take me to the house, please. The house? My house. Up there in the point. Your house? But that... I've got to get back. Get back. Home. You're puzzled for a moment, aren't you, Kay? By the strange young man who calls Jaeger House his home. You've been employed by the owner, Mrs. Jaeger, as her secretary companion for over a year now. And you've never seen him there before, nor has Mrs. Jaeger ever mentioned him. He's confused, isn't he, Kay? Yes, that's it. The shock of the wreck, the terrible experience he's been through. And so you help him along the beach into the house. You leave him sitting in a chair by the fireplace in the study and then hurry down the path to the caretaker's cottage. Dave! Dave! Miss Kay, what's wrong? Well, there's been a shipwreck. I found one of the survivors down on the beach a few minutes ago. I need your help. Of course, Miss Kay. Some clothes. And then you'd better get a doctor. Notify the authorities. Sure thing. You'll find some clothes in the closet. I'll get the car out, fetch Doc Henderson. And please, hurry. When did this happen? Well, I don't know for certain. The man seemed dazed. He did say it was his ship, a schooner, the Star of Shanghai. The Star of... What's the matter? You sure he said Star of Shanghai? Yes, yes, of course. But, Miss Kay... What is it, Dave? What's the matter? That... That was the name of Captain Yeager's ship, Miss Kay... The Star of Shanghai, a schooner. She went down 25 years ago. All hands lost. All hands lost? Hit the rocks. There was a low fog. But, Dave, I... Yes, miss. Nothing. You'd better hurry for the doctor. Back inside the house a few moments later, you stop in the entry hall. Stare at the oil painting on the wall. A painting of a three-masted schooner, Captain Yeager's ship, the Star of Shanghai. An uneasy feeling begins to creep over you, doesn't it, Kay? Yes. 
And then suddenly you're aware of a buzzer ringing close by. It's Mrs. Yeager. She wants you, Kay. You hurry upstairs to her room. Find her as usual, propped up in bed, the manuscript resting in her lap. I've been ringing for you for quite some time, my dear. I'm sorry, Mrs. Yeager. Oh, of course, you've been out for your walk. Yes. Yes, I was. I forgot. Uh, I wanted to tell you I've just finished reading your manuscript, my dear. Oh, I like it very much, very much. Thank you. Uh, Have you heard from the publishers about it? No. I've written to them, but they haven't answered yet. Oh, I'm certain they'll accept it, Kay. It's quite good, really. Quite good. Um, However, I do have a few suggestions. (laughs) That is, if you don't mind a meddling old woman's advice. No, no, of course not, Mrs. Yeager. Well, we... uh, We we can talk about it in the morning. I, I feel rather tired now. Very tired. In the morning, then. Uh, if you'll be kind enough to bring me my hot milk now... Right away, Mrs. Yeager. Kay? Yes? Is something wrong? Why... Why, no. You seem disturbed. No, it's nothing, really. There is something on your mind. Well, in a way. Oh, it's the novel, dear. You're anxious about it, aren't you? Yes, the novel. Oh, it'll work out, my dear. I know it will. Mrs. But... Yeager, your husband, his ship was lost at sea some 25 years ago. That's right. On a night very much like this one, Kay. Huh. Strange that you should ask about it now. Oh, For some reason, he's been in my thoughts all evening. It's the fog, I suppose, the horns and all. Where was the ship lost? Not far from here, up the coast. My life ended that night, my dear. I was very much in love with my husband. Yes, I know. He was such a handsome man. Tall, broad-shouldered, bronzed by the sun. Have you never seen a photograph of him, my dear? No. I never have. Uh, The album there. Hand it to me, will you? Here you are, Mrs. Yeager. Thank you, dear. Uh, Let's see. Oh, here. Here. The captain. This photograph was taken shortly after we were married. I insisted he sit for it. (laughs) He hated to have his photograph taken, but I won out. (laughs) Look, Kay, wasn't he handsome? You take the album, and your hand begins to tremble as you stare at the faded photograph. You can't believe what you see, can you, Kay? The man in the photograph is the image of the man you found on the beach just a few minutes ago. Why... What's the matter, my dear? Nothing. Nothing at all, Mrs. Yeager. It was a shock, wasn't it, Kay, discovering the photograph in the album. A photograph of Captain Yeager, lost at sea some 25 years ago. And yet you're certain it's the same man you found on the beach off Chalk Point just a few minutes ago. Very much alive. A man who seemed dazed. Spoke of the wreck of a ship named Star of Shanghai, the same as Captain Yeager's old ship. He also said Yeager House was his home. You leave Mrs. Yeager in the upstairs room, hurry down to the study, and then you stop just outside the door. You're afraid to go in, aren't you, Kay? Yes, because he's in there, the man you found on the beach. Oh, the doorbell. Here's the doc, Miss Kay. 
He brought the sheriff with him. Oh, yes. Come in, Dr. Henderson. Come in, Sheriff. Thank you, my dear. Even Miss Mellon. Now, uh, where is this young man? In there. The study. Well, I'll take a look at him. I'll go with you, Doc. Miss Fallon, old Dave was telling me you said this man mentioned the Star of Shanghai. Yes, that's right. That was the name of Captain Yeager's ship that went down 25 years ago. So I understand. A uh, schooner it was. So was this one. I see. You mentioned when this wreck happened? He said something about being in the water for hours and hours. Hmm. Funny, we usually get a call from the Coast Guard when there's a shipwreck. And you didn't? No. Oh, Miss Kay. Yes, Doctor. Uh, the young man, you sure you left him in here? Well, of course, isn't he? He was sitting right there and... The... He's gone. You notice a quick exchange of glances between Dr. Henderson and Dave, don't you, Kay? And then the sheriff joins you and the others in a search of the house. All the rooms except Mrs. Yeager's. You search the grounds, too, but there's no sign of the young man. I can't understand it. Where could he have gone? Well, he's not around here, that's a sure thing, miss. He might have wandered down to the beach again. Maybe. I'll have my deputy organize a search party as soon as I get to a phone. Uh, you're a writer, aren't you? In my spare time. Old Dave tells me you finished a novel, uh, some sort of a sea story, right? Yes. That's right. Why do you ask? Oh, I was just wondering, that's all. What is it, Sheriff? Like I said, Miss Fallon, I'll have my boys organize a search party to look for this man you said you found on the beach, but you see... But what? For your sake, I hope this isn't just a publicity stunt, Miss Fallon. Um, publicity stunt? Sometimes a writer thinks a little sensational publicity. Uh, well, you know what I mean. Now, see here, Sheriff. If Captain Yeager was still alive, he'd have made himself known years ago. But the photograph in Mrs. Yeager's album, it's the same man. I know it. Sure, sure, sure. The album is in her room. You can see for yourself. Mrs. Yeager isn't well, as you know, and I don't think it would be advisable to intrude on her at this time. With a story like this, Miss Fowler. But I tell you, the man Good I... Good night. You stand there for a moment, staring after him. Then you turn angrily, walk into the house. Then you remember the cup of milk Mrs. Yeager had asked for. A few minutes later, you go upstairs. And as you approach Mrs. Yeager's room... Hey! Hey! Mrs. Yeager, what is it? What's wrong? Oh, my dear. My dear. There's your lamp on the floor. What happened? Well, I must have knocked it over when I woke up. I had dozed off. I had the strangest dream. Dream? That the captain had come back. What? Oh, it was so, so real. He was standing here by my bed, looking down on me. No, Miss Fallon, we couldn't find any trace of the man. My deputy and his boys were out practically all night. No sign of him at all. I see, Sheriff. Checked with the Coast Guard, too. They don't know anything about a shipwreck. The only schooner called the Star Shanghai ever heard of went down 25 years ago. The Sheriff still thinks it's a publicity stunt on your part, doesn't he, Kay? And so does everyone else. You're angry and still a little frightened. And you decide to go straight to your employer, Mrs. Yeager. Tell her of the wet footprints beside her bed the night she dreamed her husband had returned. And see if she has any possible explanation. You hurry to the parking lot behind the telegraph office where you parked your car. You get in, step on the starter. As you maneuver out of the narrow parking strip, your back bumper strikes something at the side of the building. Annoyed... You get out and discover that you've damaged a bicycle. You leave a note with your address, offering to pay for any repairs, and then drive swiftly back to the house at Chalk Point. As you start inside, you glance toward the sea, and your heart seems to jump up in your throat. A low fog still clings to the shore, and in it, the figure of a man walking slowly along the beach. You're certain it's the same man you saw stagger from the sea. You hurry down the path, your heart pounding now. 
It's vanished, hasn't he, Kay? Nowhere in sight. Suddenly, you hear a familiar voice behind you. Hello, Kay. Well, oh, Jess. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to startle you. Oh, that's all right, Jess. I'm glad you're here. I just thought I'd come down and take a look around on my own. I'm only the deputy sheriff. But you I... mean you believe my story of what happened last night, Jess? Well, that you found a man on the beach? Why shouldn't I, Kay? I know you too well to think you'd make up a story like that for publicity purposes. Oh, thank heaven someone believes me. Well, as for it being Captain Yeager... Of well... course there wasn't Captain Yeager. But the photograph in the album, it's the same man. Yes, sir. I wonder if you could get that photograph for me. Quietly, that is. We don't want to alarm Mrs. Yeager. Yes. Yes, I think so. I'll have to wait until she goes to sleep. It'll be sometime after nine. I'll be waiting here. Nine o'clock. Well, she might decide to read, however. It might be later. I'd better drive into the village in the morning and meet you there. I could be here at nine tonight, just in case. No. No, I think we'd better wait until morning. Okay. Uh, got a few minutes now? Yes, of course. Let's walk down the beach. I'd like you to tell me what happened last night, exactly the way it happened. Every little detail you remember. At last, Kay, you've found someone who believes in you. Jess Williams, the young deputy sheriff. The man you know you can trust. That night, you wait in your room for Mrs. Yeager to go to sleep. You glance casually through the San Francisco paper you bought at the village. And then suddenly, something you see on one of the inside pages startles you. Photograph of a man. Carl Tassen. Deported gangster shot in gun battle with San Francisco police. The one-time underworld czar who had re-entered the United States illegally was slain. Yes, come in. Evening, Miss Kay. Oh, Dave, what is it? I just saw Mrs. Yeager. Yes? She won't be wanting her hot milk tonight. All right, Dave, thank you. I guess I'll go straight to bed. Good idea. Oh, Dave. Yes? Uh, nothing. Never mind. Night, Miss Kay. It suddenly occurred to you, didn't it, Kay, where you met the man whose picture you saw in the San Francisco paper. Yes, he's Carl Tassen, the gangster. And you saw him with old Dave two weeks ago. Bumped into them accidentally one night as they were leaving his cottage. You remember how they hurried away when they saw you. You recall Dave's pointed questions the next day. At the time, you gave little thought to the matter, but now you realize Dave was pumping you to see whether or not you got a close look at Tassin. You wonder about the whole chalk point setup. And then suddenly things begin to fall into place. And you sit there thinking it out. Then you tiptoe down the hall to Mrs. Yeager's room and listen. You hear a voice, a man's voice, but you can't make out what he's saying. Miss and Kay. then... Dave! No. Too bad you was listening, Miss Kay. Now you better go on in. Now look, Mrs. Yeager, if... Dave, what's the idea? She was outside the door, ma'am, getting an earful. Oh, I see. Come on in, Miss Fallon. Well, well. We... We've met before, haven't we? That's right. On the beach last night. You uh, rescued me from the surf. Captain Yeager, that's me. Really? I find that a little hard to believe. Uh, so did the police, huh? <laughs> you planned the whole act. To discredit me. Mrs. Yeager planned it. I preferred more violent action. Mrs. Yeager! Yes, Kay, I, I didn't want you to get hurt. And all this because I happened to see a man outside of Dave's cottage two weeks ago. A gangster you had smuggled into the States. Carl Tassin. That's right. After Tassin got himself knocked off, we figured you'd probably see his picture in the paper. Go to the police. But after what happened last night, nobody would believe the story about Tassin either. Right. In your case, the little girl who cried wolf once too often. Very clever, Mr. Norton. Captain Norton. Master of the freighter Western Star. So that's how you get your clients to the States. Carl Tassin was a special case, the kind of man we could have used. Actually, our main business is smuggling. We've got a great setup here, Miss Fallon, and you're not going to spoil it. Well, what are you going to do, Captain? 
What I should have done a long time ago, Mrs. Yeager, instead of going through that crazy routine of yours. No, I won't allow it. Oh, you won't allow it, No. Huh? As long as I'm a partner and you're using my house as a rendezvous, what I say goes. Not anymore. I'm running this and you'll do as I say. You're in pretty deep, Mrs. Yeager. Don't forget that. Now listen to me. Save your breath. It's the only way. It's this girl or us. All right, Miss Fallon. Suppose the two of us take a nice little stroll along the beach. You're certain he's going to kill you, aren't you, Kay? Because you know too much. As you walk through the downstairs hall, you glance at the clock a few minutes after nine. And then you realize if you'd listened to the deputy, agreed to let him wait for you at the beach, he'd be there now, close by, to save you. You move out of the house, Captain Norton right behind you, the gun in his hand. And the two of you go down the path to the beach. All right, Miss Fallon. This is as far as we go. Listen to me, Captain Norton. Like I told the old lady, save it. You know, you're a nice-looking doll, Kay. Yeah. I sort of hate to do this, but I've got to think of that easy dough I'm making, those suckers who will pay five grand to have me ease them into the States. I wouldn't tell anyone. Oh, sure, I bet you wouldn't. Sorry, baby. Sorry. <laughs> It all seems like a nightmare, doesn't it, Kay? The strange man staggering out of the sea, his complete disappearance. The realization that Chalk Point is the headquarters of a criminal smuggling ring. That even your employer, Mrs. Yeager, is a part of it. And then the walk to the beach with Captain Norton, the head of the organization. His decision to kill you. Yes, your mind is spinning when suddenly you realize you're lying on the couch in the study of Yeager House. And your friend, Jess Williams, the deputy sheriff, is standing close by, looking down on you, smiling. Hiya, Kay. Feel all right? I think so, Jess. How did I get here? Well, you fainted. But Captain Norton... Oh, easy now. He's in the other room, handcuffed old Dave. Dave gave me the whole story of the racket, and including Mrs. Yeager's part in it. But Captain Norton had a gun. He was going to shoot I me. I know. I spotted the two of you when you left the house. When I saw you had you covered with a gun, I followed. Looks like I fired just in time. You saved my life, Jess. Yeah. Funny the way it happened, too. I wasn't intending to see you until tomorrow morning. But I was cruising around the village in the squad car a little while ago. And ran into Frankie Holden. The youngster at the telegraph office? Yeah. He had a telegram to deliver out this way. His bicycle was broken... So I gave him a lift. You mean... I mean a certain hit-and-run artist named Kay Fallon smashed Frankie's bicycle, left a very thoughtful note on it. Lucky you did, too. Otherwise, uh, I wouldn't have picked Frankie up. He'd been out here tonight. Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman as the Whistler, Virginia Gregg, Larry Thor, Isabel Randolph, Raymond Burr, Leo Cleary, and Britt Wood. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Adrian Jean Doe, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler was entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. 